Welcome to the Make Life Your Bitch podcast. I'm your host, Brittany Alicia. Greatness is a decision and your birthright. You deserve to love the woman looking back at you in the mirror. This show is for the purpose-driven female entrepreneur who is committed to only counting the time she gets back up. The woman who is ready to ignite the flame within, find her voice, and use the power of her story to transform the lives of those around her. This is your weekly fuel to inspire you to action, where I'll be sharing inspirational stories, real talks with thought leaders and successful entrepreneurs from around the world, and provide you with actionable success strategies for creating a business you love. I'm a content marketing coach, and I'm committed to helping you as an online creator and entrepreneur wherever you are to turn your dreams into a reality, to help you transform your messaging so you can create a genuine connection with your audience and grow your income online. You are far more powerful and stronger than you will ever imagine. We are the warriors. You were born for this. Let's make life your bitch. Hello, hello. Welcome to the Make Life Your Bitch podcast. This is Brittany Alicia. I have Jennifer Kramer Lewis here with me, and I'm excited for our conversation today. She is a success sorceress and spiritual advisor and mentor um, for entrepreneurs specializing in human design and gene keys. She has been doing her business coaching since 2014, and she is over halfway through her deconditioning process. She's four years into this, and I'm excited to have her here because you are going to be hearing from her in a future episode where we dive deeper into business and your chart. But today we're here to talk about and connect with all of you reflectors out there. So hello, Jennifer. (laughs) Yay. I'm so glad to be here. So glad to be here, especially talking about reflectors. So rare, 1% of the population. I have a reflector client that I just finished having a client session with. And one of the things that she told me was that sometimes she has fear of missing out and, you know, she opts into programs um, that she probably has no business opting into uh, thinking that that program will be specialized enough for her. And she, you know, prior to working with me, had had numerous coaches. She's a business professional. And so she's hired coaches all along and had million dollar businesses and multi-million dollar businesses. And what she said about working with me is because I am, you know, reflectors have a 28 day cycle that they're working on. And so whatever day of her 28 day cycle, she said, you always bring your A game. You're always perfectly present with me and willing to ask me the questions that allow me to have my own point of view about what's going on with my life. And Mm -hmm. I really agree with that. I'm like, I love being present. I'm a manifesting generator. So you expect me to ask you questions, expect you to ask me questions and, you know, have that repartee back and forth and be a hundred percent present with the coaching and facilitation and mentorship. Which I think, you know, I was just talking to someone um, about this, how important it is that as coaches, as we learn more and more about human design, there's a deeper level of awareness of human design. Everybody's is not the same. We don't buy the same. We don't invest the same. Even if I'm, you know, say I was a projector and I was with another projector, I'm still going to buy different than that person. I'm still going to show up differently because that projector might be not interested in doing live video. Whereas for me, that's a huge thing is getting my voice, being on a podcast, all that kind of stuff. So it's really interesting that once we, especially as entrepreneurs, once we get into go down the rabbit hole, um, very important that we do hire a coach um, who does human design and someone who, you know, isn't, it's not like a maybe later kind of thing. Like for me, it's like, if you're just starting your business or you've been at it a while and you're struggling, it's a now thing. (laughs) Mm -hmm. And sometimes, you know, like you, you mentioned how people buy differently. Mm -hmm. And I would say that at the beginning of a business, you know, people are trying to bootstrap everything. And I would say that, yes, there are things that you can do independently. However, I think it's really important for people to know that the data is it costs you $150,000 to start a business. So if you have a business and, you know, you're trying to do it on a dime, 
the $150,000 can be your own IP, your own time, your own talents, going and learning how to do stuff that's like $15 an hour, $25 an hour, $35 an hour, $45 an hour. But where do you invest that time? You know, and especially like reflectors uh, are so sensitive. So the data that comes into reflectors can knock them off their game so freaking fast. And mm -hmm. so if they're like getting too much data, they're around really like low vibe people or sort of energy vampire-ish kind of people, and, and they're not on their highest game, they're not with the people, they're not uh, actively creating boundaries to facilitate that environment, because it's your environment as a reflector. So mm -hmm. you think about like any of the, um, any of the definitions of environment, so it can be your bedroom, it can be your home, it can be your community, but it also can be who's in your inner circle, uh, who is in your like friend inner circle, in your client inner circle, and then also, you know, the macrocosm as well. Like, is it correct for you? Because as that one percenter, you are here to be like an embodiment of a transformation of like health mm -hmm. and so the health of the community will be macrocosm and microcosm. So if the health of your tiny community is, you know, you're a mom, you're a daughter, you're a wife, you're a sister. And so those roles are superseding the, your sole purpose. You can let that happen or you can be like, mm, guess what guys? Mama's got a new set of boundaries. <laughs> <laughs> so if we were to, like, if there was, there's someone listening right now, who's like, all they've done is they've gone and they've been like, you know what? I've been listening to the podcast now. And what is my chart? And they're like, I'm a reflector. And they're like, I have no fucking idea what that means, but I'm a reflector. If we were to just give like a rundown of like who a reflector is just to like start people off as to like where, where do they even get started? Um, what is like, what would you say? Um, like, what is, what is unique about a reflector's chart? Yeah. Well, cool. Um, I'm a very visual person. So I'm going to assume that this person is a very visual person. So I'm just pulling up a chart right now of a reflector that I've peeled off some of the information. So it's like fully, uh, here, let me move everybody out of the way here. So this is a reflector chart. So one of the things about being a reflector is that none of the energy centers are defined. So none of them are defined. They're all what is called open or undefined. So open means, so if you look at this person's crown chakra, there's no gates that are defined in the crown chakra. And then... I think all of the other chakras have at least some gates in them. Mm -hmm. And so when you are undefined, you are completely open. And so that area can be a place where you receive information from the cosmos, from space, from other people's bodies, from other people's businesses, from other people's bank accounts. Uh, you know, maybe you have a health bent in your entrepreneurial, like maybe you're a naturopathic physician and you have this open crown and people come in and you're like, oh my goodness, this, 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 and this. And so, you know, you become a medical medium when people come to you. So these open areas are the areas where you can receive the most information. And so when you see on this chart, here you see this this person's third eye has one two three four five gates that are defined in the third eye and then there's also one gate that's reaching towards the third eye and so these gates all have mates mm -hmm. so the gates have mates and so it's interesting as an entrepreneur, as people who are looking to use their talents for business, to notice what the mating gates are 
and that are looking to have completion or to create what's called definition. So that's a more advanced conversation, but also noticing it and just being curious for yourself. So as a reflector, your strategy is something called waiting a lunar cycle. So might be interesting for you. One, this client tracks the phases of the moon and we discovered that that was probably something that she needed to do. I think we had worked together for a couple of months and I noticed that her energy changed quite dramatically with the phases of the moon. Mm -hmm. What can happen is what are called the transits. And so what is coming through energetically on astrological transits changes the definition of the chart. So this person one day could be a reflector completely. And then another day, the definition coming through turns them into a manifesting generator or turns them into a manifester or turns them into a projector. And so, or just a, a, a classic generator. So they're going to have more energy on those days than they do as a plain, not plain, but as a, a reflector. And so there's a lot of things that are very magical about being a reflector. Is it a profile that's easy to learn how to like navigate and ride? No. Do you have to collect a lot of data for yourself as a being? Absolutely. And so this person is a one three. So she's uh, her first profile number is one, which is the investigator. So she does have the ability to use her own investigating ability to learn how to navigate her earth vehicle that has a reflector energy type. And so reflectors are receptive. So but they are sampling. So I'm, I'm going to explain that to you. So receptive and sampling means that their aura will open, they'll have a look around and have a sample of what's in the air, what's in the environment, and then their aura will close and, and they'll almost digest that sample. And then, you know, so depending on what their definition is too, they will be sampling as a generator or sampling as a manifester. And so that's why they need the full lunar cycle because there's so much data that can come through the body with all of this openness in the body, you know, so for some days they will be, you know, like super high and super excited and super turned on by life. And some days they will be like, Oh my goodness, I think I just know need to hide in bed and pull the covers over my head. And so to know that for yourself, that you do have a long session that you have to use and um, gather data before you jump into a coaching program or, you know, jump into a relationship or, you know, like some of these long term things like have a baby, um, you know, <laughs> or even like adopt a dog or, you know, even agree to like look after something that is another be you know mm -hmm. what I mean like so if you're like oh it's okay I'll babysit your kids for two weeks while you're in Aruba uh maybe <laughs> not reflectors because you know whatever you were thinking um and feeling and sensing on April 21st is not what you're going to be thinking feeling and sensing on the 20th of May you will have collected way more data on this I want to call it a sample size. So mm -hmm. this is a really scientific uh, profile. And the more you can just like relax into the fact that you're going to be collecting data at all times, the better. And, and you know, I love that you're saying all that because first off, um, you know, it's kind of that thing where like, you're not crazy is the first thing I hear is like, here's your permission. You're not crazy. And it sounds like you're constantly in an energetic shit storm and mm -hmm. the importance of really learning how to navigate your own energy, doing things like grounding and all that, because, you know, for myself as a projector, I mean, I'm like, I'm pretty sure with the transits, they overlap onto our charts, correct? 
Yes. Right. So as a transit, like I will never have an open scent, like, you know, be undefined where I'm already defined. Mm -hmm. Whereas, you know, so for me, there's certain things that like, I will never be able to be a, like have the reflector experience. Whereas reflectors, they get all of us. Like they're like, one day I'm a projector tomorrow. I'm a manifesting generator. And they're like, you know, it sounds like it's a lot of that, like up and down emotions. And because essentially the reflector, like what I'm understanding, cause I don't know much about reflectors. So it sounds like really what's reflecting. It's what's reflecting back to you, right? Like I'm a generator today. And that's what's, you know, when I'm around someone, I'm sure, you know, so if she was around you or someone was around you manifesting or like a generator, um, are you like, because you take on other people's energy, will they kind of reflect back and mimic like a manifesting generator as well? Well, she's around like that person's around you or that's a great question. So, so from what I'm hearing from you, you're saying if I was a reflector, Mm -hmm. And I was around a manifesting generator. What I feel more like a manifesting generator. Yeah. Yeah. So the answer is where those gates have mates. Okay. So my chart overlapping onto her chart may not necessarily turn her into a manifesting generator. Okay. And so would it be the gates that are, um, are open for you, but they are defined for her that would you would complete each other? (laughs) Uh, No, it's the gates that are defined for me and defined for her that create an electromagnetic channel. So I have a defined gate that is looking for a mate. She has a defined gate that's looking for a mate. So for example, the 4629. Mm -hmm. Uh, I have the 46. If she had the 29, then those two would plug in together and create an net electromagnetic channel and so those electromagnetic channels are very sexy very very sexy they really are like oh there's a person in the room with the 29 and my body's like "Mm, I wonder which one it is Mm -hmm. and the more um the more open the person is the more they are susceptible to wanting to have that plug-in And so also being conditioned by that gate that's looking for a mate. Um, So what do I want to say about that? Just to be aware that just because this person has the 29 gate and I have the 46 gate, like the rest of the person could be completely horrible. And, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's that's what I meant with the open... um, Like, I think we were saying the same thing. Um, Mm -hmm. And so with that, like with a reflector, what is the things that they need to be super aware of? Like as, you know, as humans, as entrepreneurs, um, what are things that they need to be aware of when it comes to like business and that? Like, I know you mentioned them waiting for, um, for them to invest or like make decisions of someone coming into their world. But what are things that maybe they might not even see coming and all of a sudden they're in it and they're like, how the fuck did this happen? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So the first thing that I want to say is to create space in your day where you are not engaging with your family, with your pets, with your clients, uh, with Instagram or TikTok, like nothing that can be programming you as a being. So out in nature, Uh, you know, if you live in Canada, like we do, you're gonna have to figure it out. Like what is your out in nature, like you might have to like sit on a deck chair on your porch with a heating pad, (laughs) whatever. Or maybe you just decide that you, you know, you love downhill skiing, and you're just gonna freaking do it, or buy yourself a, a snowmobile, like just like whatever your out in nature is. Mm -hmm. And really, really be clear every freaking day. You need a a portion of your day where you are not plugged into social media. You are not plugged into people who have energetic or emotional demands of you. Mm -hmm. Clear. So whatever amount of time that is, like if you can invest four hours of your day that you are not plugged in, then great. And, you know, people always try to like, oh, well, what about 
15 minutes, Jennifer. I'm like, no, that's not long enough for you to even like take a freaking breath. Like Mm -hmm. think about it. Like if you go for a massage, how long does it take for your body to take that big fucking sigh, Mm -hmm. you know, and then triple or quadruple that? You know, because sometimes, you know, I'll be on the massage table and take like 40 freaking minutes for my body to finally quit being in fight or flight because I've overwhelmed myself and I have a, you know, a quote unquote stronger profile. Like I've got a ton of channels and, you know, definition. Mm -hmm. Uh, So I have, you know, quote unquote, a stronger profile. So thinking about that for yourself, like what's the maximum amount of time that you can invest in clearing yourself. The other thing is reflectors uh, can sleep with other reflectors. They can possibly sleep with a projector, but they should probably not sleep with generators and manifesting generators or manifestors. If they want to get sleep, that is. (laughs) If they actually want to sleep, because you need to clear out those energy centers and just let them be uh, like what I'm seeing is like, like that perfect spring day where it's like you, you don't dare open your windows until that perfect spring day. And then the perfect spring day, you like whip open the sliding glass door and every window in the house. And you're like vacuuming and getting rid of all the dust. And you might be like saging and running Palo Santo and, you know, entity clearings and all of the things on that perfect spring day. Well, that aspect of things for reflectors can happen during your sleep like in my chart I'm a reflector when I sleep even though I'm a manifesting generator I'm a reflector when I sleep and I'll tell you my sleep is is elusive I'm so freaking sensitive and so I can't imagine being a reflector all day (laughs) trying to freaking sleep oh my gosh so prioritize your sleep prioritize your nature time and then also give yourself a good long sample period to figure out whether or not you want to work with clients so like whether you have um you know for both of us we have our podcasts and so which are also broadcasts so if it's like you know people like to listen they can find us if people like to watch they can find us and then if people like to sample they can find us on our social media. And so I would recommend that for reflectors, especially that the the ideal end user can decide through a good long sample period to work with you and then reflect that back to the end user, like have a good long sample period that you can check out with people, whether or not you want to work with them. So I wouldn't recommend having them buy into your six month program without you sampling them Mm -hmm. your year long program without you sampling them. Uh, That's just a recipe for disaster. Cause if you hate them on week three, And, you know, you're just like, oh, my goodness, I have to sleep for six hours after my half an hour client session, or if they're like jumping into your group program, and they're tanking everybody in your group program on the days that they show up on the call, you need to have the ovaries to be able to be like, this is not an ideal client, I am going to refund them. And have a process of doing that where they feel honored and if they don't oh well you've given them their money back you know and you've run it through your legal team and made sure that it's like ironclad that you refund them Mm -hmm. and you know so there's there's a bunch of different processes and and it's all to do with environment and it's all to do with self-care in relation to the environment okay and so like obviously you mentioned nature and that kind of thing what are other things that people could do like would you say like you know baths um are those good for reflectors yeah well I would um anything to do with embodiment because there's so much like openness in the body and Mm -hmm. so the body has tons and tons of wisdom so you like if you look at a chart obviously you've got your crown you've got your third eye you've got your throat so those three chakras are 
only a third of all of the chakras. Everything mm-hmm. else is below the neck. Mm-hmm. And in most cases, you know, that's unconscious, you know, yeah. so it's not going to be immediately obvious to you. It might be, you know, your end user gets the benefit of that innate talent but you are navigating all of it so i would say you know physical self care like a bath or massages with really high end conscious people movement with high end conscious people that makes you feel relaxed makes you feel um like you've uh moved the energy Uh, Also spiritual practices, like really have a look at what makes you feel great, Mm -hmm. you know, sample your data, you know, maybe you decide that you love chanting, or maybe you decide that you love, you know, burning Palo Santo and, and, you know, sort of like, quote unquote, saging yourself once a day, or you learn, um, you know, some of the things that I know how to do is, you know, talking to entities and like channeling um, different beings and getting information from them for me or from for my clients, you know, so it's, it's going to be curious. And the more curious people are, and the more they collect the data of, you know, like, what makes me feel healthy as a reflector, what makes my environment healthy as a reflector Mm -hmm. am I walking into an environment you know just noticing like oh I for myself I'm not a reflector even but I can't go to Costco I cannot go to Costco no (laughs) no you're like (laughs) so that is imagine being a reflector and trying to go to Costco Jesus (laughs) those are the people that they made those that pick up groceries for oh love it I love it yeah Costco I like and it comes to my door (laughs) Um, shop at Costco I'm saying get Costco to bring the groceries to you exactly Uh, so with like reflectors and that kind of thing um I mean obviously you've mentioned that you know they need that space for themselves and the importance of having that energy conscious person is is if they're going for like say a massage even with someone who's energy conscious is that are they still going to be affected by that person's energy as well so still important that they take that time yeah. alone absolutely. anyway absolutely yeah so your alone time is not your massage time because you're still plugged into that person who's touching you and so and even if it's a um just for example um like I sometimes I get a feeling that my client, my reflector client, I'll get a feeling and I'll be like, oh, and I'm like, are we on today? And, you know, so the, the buy in, you know, so to ask yourself, OK, um, even though I booked a massage. So even though you booked a massage, you booked it three weeks ago. Are you are you in? Mm-hmm. Does it feel like you are in and if you get a no then honor the no I mean obviously within the the constraints of whatever that business is asking you to give on the cancellation period but allow yourself to have that honoring of is it a yes that I'm gonna do this or is it a no that I'm gonna do this and even if I booked it three weeks ahead you know, if today is a no to let this person touch my body, then I need to honor that. You need to honor that, you guys. And, you know, especially in your love relationships. Oh, my goodness. You know, like your children, your spouse, your lover, like a no is a fucking no. And so with um, with that being said, like the yes and no. So someone like a, who's a generator, a sacral generator, they... I would ask like their sacral, like it, yes, no questions. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, wh- how would a reflector, like, what are they asking? Yes, no. Like what would a yes typically feel like for them or a no? Um, does that make sense? Yes. 
Yes. Um, I think from an academic standpoint, we're looking for those places that have some definition. Uh, when you plug into your, just for example, say you're like, mm, okay, let's have some afternoon delight. You've like made this plan with your lover that you're going to get together and you're going to get it on. Well, you know what your definition is when those gates plug in. Mm -hmm. And so maybe that your partner creates a generator body and then you're like, oh, well, my yes and no is in my hips and mm -hmm. in my uterus. And, you know, so knowing that for yourself, but also this sample, 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 because it may be that you're just getting a third eye hit of your yes and no. You might be getting a splenic hit of your yes and no. And those are instantaneous. And if you're not paying attention, they'll just go away. Mm -hmm. And then you're like, well, shit. I, and then in hindsight, you're like, I freaking knew. I knew that was a no. And, you know, I love that person. I want to have, you know, a generative, juicy, gorgeous relationship with them. But I said yes, and it was a no. Mm -hmm. And then you back it up and be like, okay, well, what was my sample? When did I receive my sample? And when did I ignore my sample? Mm -hmm. you, know, you still get that data and you get a ton of it. Mm -hmm. You get a ton of it. You know, those centers being open doesn't mean that you don't get data. It means that you get all the freaking data. So you get my data and your data. And so then you're going to have to sit through and know what your data feels like. And the only way to do that is to develop some ease of process and to be facilitated into knowing what that feels like for you. Yeah. And it sounds a lot like that's why that alone time is so important for you to ha have created and understand what awareness feels like to you. So that way, when you do get an intuitive hit or whatever it is, you know what that feels like because you know what your normal is. Yeah. Right? And a lot of people don't. I mean, you just think about how much of the planet is in fight or flight, mm -hmm. regardless of what their energy type is, how much of the planet is in burnout regardless of their energy type. And then imagine wandering in with all that openness and trying to figure out what's mine. Mm -hmm. So with a reflector, are they the kind of person who wants all the information? Are they that person who walks in and they're like asking you a million questions and wanting all the information or how does that work? Mm, okay. So here's what I notice. And this is the first thing that I look at is, is this person a right angle cross or a left angle cross is the first question that I would ask. So a right angle cross, you know, you'll have the right angle cross of the vessel of love, which is me. Uh, and so people who are right angle cross are on what I call a self-motivated mission mm -hmm. and you know whether or not that's what gene keys or human design says I think this is my own language but it's a self-motivated mission I decided to come down to earth I'm on a self-motivated mission mm -hmm. and so the left angle crosses are not on a self-motivated mission they're here to help they're here to clean up they're here to come and have some, you know, interaction with humanity that creates a whole different outcome, a whole different timeline. Mm -hmm. So sometimes the right angle crosses will come in and they'll be like, how do I help? How do I help? And sometimes the left angle crosses will come in and say, but my thing, my, my very specific precious thing. <laughs> and so then I have to be like, Ouch! and switch sides on them, you know, I'm a right angle cross. And my first questions were, you know, how do I have a really healthy family? You know, how do I have really healthy relationships? You know, how do I help the highest people at the highest level? Mm -hmm. The answer for a right angle cross is by being yourself, mm -hmm. by being on your own, you know, your self-motivated mission. So what mm -hmm. do you want? And yeah. then the left angle crosses need to be asked like, Hey, 
you know, like, okay, so if you actually wanted to serve humanity, if you actually came up with like a new app or a new way of doing things that could help humanity, like 8 billion people, or maybe even 1 billion people, or maybe even 50,000 people, then, you know, we can look at your chart and give you some frequencies. Where does what you are already doing match that? And, you know, and then some specific parts of your chart, like where, where does that make you feel like you're the most valuable, the most switched on, which gives you the most energy because you're like, oh, I'm on mission. I'm on mission. Mm -hmm. And a lot of us, I would say, you know, only 1% of the earth is even close to being on mission. But mm -hmm. imagine, imagine if 2% of the earth was on mission, or 5% of the earth was on mission. Mm -hmm. you know, especially you left angle cross people, you are not here to be selfish, you are here to be transpersonal. And the freaking right angle cross people stop trying to help people. You're not actually here to help people. You might be here to be visible. You know, and that was something that I had to work through. I'm like, oh, I don't know if I want to be visible. But also I have the charisma channel. So when I walk in the room, people are either like, who the fuck's that? Or who the fuck's that? <laughs> <laughs> like, I really, I just can't. I'm just like, okay, whatever freaking happens. I know that I'm naturally visible. And so, so for your, yourself, you said you're a right angle cross. I'm a right angle cross. And so I'm sure there's entrepreneurs now listening and they're like, so I'm supposed to be selfish, but like, how do I be a coach and be, a, how do I be a coach and, and a right angle cross? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What a great freaking question and a freaking reflector. Imagine a, coach, <laughs> a right angle cross and a reflector. You're like, I'm so freaking sensitive. I can't even, this woman is telling me I need at least four hours a day to myself doing nothing. <laughs> other than painting or yoga alone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, I have kids, I have a dog, I have a husband, I have a business. Like, how can I even? Mm -hmm. And it's like collecting the data, collecting the data, because your chart will also inform. It will inform what kind of coaching. Is it one-to-one? -one? Is it group? Is it like, uh, you know, waving hands over bodies at like Stonehenge? Like, what is it that you're here to do? And then as a right angle cross, again, your chart's going to inform. Like the manifesting generators uh, have the charisma channel. And so the charisma channel has energy to do things for me. Mm -hmm. And so I can't actually use that energy to do things for you. So hypothetically, <laughs> is it, are we now giving people permission that it's okay to coach people and be doing it for you as a right angle cross? Yes. And here's where I'm, I'm a gonna... right angle cross of rulership. Yes. That's why I'm like, <laughs> I'm not asking because I'm like, are we giving permission to be selfish? Like, is that what we're saying? No, I'm like, yeah. I'm actually yeah. serious. Like, are you giving me permission that it's okay for me to actually say I am doing this for me? Because there's so many people out there who view that as selfish. Like, how dare you? You're supposed to be, we're supposed to be here to be a vessel of love and like to give to everybody else. And it's so selfish for you to have a reason for yourself to be doing this. Yeah. And I think, you know, and I think Love that's it. it's such a great question. Such a great question. You know, and we're not discluding the left angle crosses. There really needs to be a conversation about being a transpersonal being and not, you know, ending up like you've gone into a leech pool and you've got 75 leeches on you at all times. That's and where then, boundaries come in. <laughs> yes. So at the moment, we're not talking to you left angle crosses let's be very very clear and i know without a word of a doubt you guys have at least 16 energetic leeches on you at all fucking times <laughs> i know that and so again we would be talking about energetic boundaries and actual conversations that you need to have with people actual clauses that you need to have in your contracts 
you know, I have a clause in my contract called the A game clause. And if I can't bring my A game to your session, I'm fucking canceling. And please don't be mad at me, but I don't want to bring anything other than my A game. So that might be selfish. Mm -hmm. So does it feel selfish that I have an A game clause in my contract? Okay. If you were really looking forward to having your session with me and I cancel and you go through your little spaz because you're like, well, wait a minute, I needed to plug in on these five different things. And Jennifer, how dare you not bring your A game? Well, I'm not bringing, I'm not not bringing my A game because I have the A game clause in my contract. And I'm really careful about that. Mm -hmm. So one, set up your legal Set up your business practices so people know that you are a sovereign being and that if you didn't want to coach or you didn't have the energy to coach on a particular day, you are selfish enough to be able to be like, no, I'm not bringing it today. So we're not doing it today. I will reschedule. We will make sure it works for you. And if I have the A game, then I will be bringing it on that day. I I think I've only had to do that twice. You Since know, 2014, but, like that's a long time. <laughs> uh, yeah, but it's there. It's mm -hmm. there. And then also, you know, when I feel like I need a break, then I'm contacting my clients and being like, I'm going to take the next two weeks off. And I'm taking them up. So again, more selfishness. But then if we look at your chart, uh, reflectors, if we look at your chart or whatever your definition is in your chart, your conscious moon is going to inform what you need as a being in order to be able to feel valuable, to feel fed. And so just notice that. You know, it's like being a little kid and your parents deliberately put stuff on your plate that is healthy that like when you try to eat it you just want to throw up mm -hmm. maybe you do that to yourself or maybe you just notice that this is the frequency this is the gate this is the house it's in mm -hmm. this is the line number after the gate like there's levels of sophistication sophistication there you know this you know this chart that you see you know like coming in you're like wow that's really really complicated yes it is <laughs> and I think that's what's so important like it's so important for people to understand like you know we're talking about reflectors today but this is just like scratching that surface of mm -hmm. about you right because like once you start throwing like you said the profiles the lines the different, the different gates, you know, whether that gate is defined or like it's complete or it's not complete, like everything changes as mm -hmm. to like who you are as a person. So I think it's so important that people understand that. Cause I, I think a lot of people try when they're first learning about human design, trying to decipher a chart on their own. And it's mm -hmm. like, you are never going to do it. <laughs> yeah. Well, energetically, like aside from human design and gene keys, which is what we're talking about today, and the energy profiles, which is human design, there's also, you know, the quantum. So you cannot, um, you cannot affect change by yourself. What if you made 2023 the year that you went all in on you, the year that you made the decision to take your business seriously and stop at nothing to make your dreams your reality? It's time to master yourself and create even more freedom in your business and life by harnessing the power of human design energetics in business. Join Katie Carlson and I on the journey as together we help you create even more abundance, time, magic, and money. Freedom in your energy, freedom in your offers, freedom in your sales, freedom in your business. You may be someone who is just starting out and you are looking to do things the right way from the start as you launch your new program or offer. Or maybe you've been at it a while and you know what you have to offer would completely change someone's life, but you can't seem to find those ready-to-buy clients that everyone speaks about. The answer is simple. No one has met you where you are at, 
and you need someone to help you put all the pieces together in a way that brings you success. The Freedom Program is all about you creating a solid foundation for your business. When you go through our process, you will be building an audience of aligned buyers who cannot wait to buy your next thing. You've been sold before on the dream of financial success, but you feel you haven't had any true support to go through the finish line. And trust me, we get it. We are here to support you and hold your hand through the finish line, creating your offers, designing your signature system, align your energy type, profile, and design, and create consistency in your business that grows your income. We are here to help you create the freedom you dream of with even more abundance, time, magic, and money that you deserve. To join us on the journey to freedom, head to the link in the description to learn more. There's also like, what is your energetic level of investment in the change that you would like to have and be and do? And at the beginning, people are like consuming all this free content. And there's some gorgeous free content out there. Gorgeous. So if you're looking for free content and resources, like send me a DM wherever you see this, you know, because I have um, I have people who I consider experts, people who I have studied under and, and invested in studying under, but I did start consuming their free content. And I have a ton of free content, you know, mm -hmm. so you can go to my YouTube, Jennifer Kramer Lewis, look me up on YouTube, consume a ton of my free content. You can go to my website. I have some things there. Um, I'm on Facebook. I have a group. So you can go to community.jenniferkramerlewis.com and engage with me there. And I need you to know that if you're going to be on purpose, on mission, then there's always a tactical team. Like, think about it. You know, you're Tom Cruise. You're like, do, 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 do. <laughs> <laughs> Just like hanging out. Like he's got, you know, all of his gear. He's got all of his tech support people. You know, he's got satellite comms, you know, like just all of the things. So you're never alone. And you're only alone as, as alone as you allow yourself to be. So listen to bod podcasts and broadcasts. Look for people whose throat definition makes you feel like, wow, I feel really confident with the information that this person is imparting. Like I'm thinking about my projector client that recommended me to come on this podcast and talk about um, being a reflector. And uh, she said... And she said over and over again, like the level of confidence that I have in my business has gone through the roof. The level of confidence that I have in my relationships and setting boundaries, you know, in client acquisition, like all of the things, the level of confidence that she has in her physical being that she's like, she's not crazy that, you know, this is really, you know, uh, um, it's a complicated vessel mm -hmm. to find. You know, this, this, you know, it's a Bugatti. We're not talking about a Kia. <laughs> <laughs> you have incarnated into a Bugatti. And if you don't know what a Bugatti is, Google it. <laughs> Look up supercar blondie Bugatti. And then come and sit in a freaking Bugatti with supercar blondie. Because this, you are a Bugatti. You are not for everybody not even freaking close. And people who own Bugattis have like special garages for their Bugattis. And, you know, like it's, it's, it's very sophisticated and it's very elite and you're not here for, you know, uh, what do I want to say? You are not here for the average person to engage with you. I love that. And like, um, with all the, um, with all the links that you mentioned, we'll make sure we put those in the show notes. So with a reflector, would you say like the way they show up then um, within their businesses? Because obviously this podcast is for entrepreneurs. Um, would you say a big thing for them is content focused? Is them putting their content out there for people to consume 
and then building their relationship that way, because I can like, I can't even see a reflector, like being in their DMS, like that's a solid, like fuck off. If that, like, if from my, from my understanding, (laughs) I like it. That's a really great question. So what I really wanted to say to you when you asked me that question is when you think about the environment Mm -hmm. as a reflector, if you could shop environments like okay I'm at the mall there's all of these different environments that I can show up in which environments make me want to go in there because there are a very specific there is a very specific mission like you're going to know from your incarnation cross am I left angle cross am I right angle cross what are the four frequencies that I'm here to be and do And then think about the environments because every environment needs a reflector. Mm -hmm. So do you want to show up as an advisor in someone else's coaching program? Do you want to show up as an advisor in someone else's financial program? Or just like thinking about those, like, where is your expertise? And if you could show up in the perfect environment, like what's the Louis Vuitton? What's the Chanel of your industry? What's the um, Rolls Royce or Tiffany's of your industry? And how do you just like show up there? Mm -hmm. And, you know, Tiffany's isn't answering DMs. (laughs) (laughs) Tiffany's has a guard that is standing like looking out like do I buzz you in do you look like you belong well I remember someone um I think it was Melanie on layer was talking about it and she said she went to a Rolex store and there's this lineup of people wanting to go into Rolex and she said there wasn't even anything in the store like they could walk in and they could look at a like a, a magazine of watches like it at that point, there wasn't even anything in that store. But that's the luxury experience that they create. And so people are wanting to go to that place because of the experience and because of the luxury of wanting to like, they want to be part of that. And so it's kind of like, you know, that same thing with the reflectors, like, you don't need to go to all the places. And, um, I think, you know, especially for coaches, they feel like they need to spread themselves so thin that they need to be in this place, this place. And I always say to my clients, like, go find the place that like you want to hang out because if you don't want to be there, like you are not going to continue to show up there. It's not going to feel good to you. Like go choose the places and become the expert and the authority and Everyone knows who you are in that space. Wow. Well, and think about it. So reflectors, you know, I can feel them, you know, all the reflectors listening to this in the future, wherever it is. It's like, well, what if it's crickets? Babe, it will never be crickets. Like, look at the the those gates in your chart are all looking for mates. And so those mates are all looking for you. Mm-hmm. Like, really, honestly, you're sexy as fuck. So when you actually do show up and you're clear, you're not burnt out, you're not like, you know, trying to run all over and solve people's problems when you're a right angle cross and you're not being, you know, selfish and entitled when you're a left angle cross, you know, and you know what your number one frequency, which is your personality son, really start to investigate that personality son and ask a ton of questions and make a demand of the universe to really show you what you are here to experience. And, you know, as a right angle cross, it's about the experience as a left angle cross. It's still about the experience, but it's also like, Hey, what's my role. Okay. And so what would you say for reflectors? um, If they know they have a big day coming up, like it's one that they can't get out of like their, it's going to be a big day. They know they're going to like be bombarded with people's energy. It, it is how it is. What is the best way for them to prepare for that? And re- I mean, obviously at the end of the day, release it by going and being alone. 
but <laughs> is there any way that they can prepare in advance so that way they don't completely spin out throughout the day? Yeah. Yes, I do have information about that. So one, try to be the one who controls the date and uh, go on to um, a transits website. Uh, so you can pull the transits on uh, Jovian Archive. I think you can pull the transits on AstroSeek. So those are free resources where you can pull the transits and then notice what that turns you into. So if it turns you into a generator or a manifesting generator or a manifester or a projector, like just notice. And then with your data collection, you'll be like, oh, maybe I like being a reflector today, but maybe going into this environment as a projector would make me feel extra sexy because projectors do have people coming to them like that just naturally people are like, can you help me with this? They always want to ask a projector a question. They always want to um, tap into that, uh, you know, that penetrating aura that just sees all. And so it may be that you are, are um, profile sampling and get a sense of when the best time is for you using the transits. Now, this is more involved but you're collecting data, collecting data. And we talk about data on my show all the freaking time and super, super important for reflectors. So one, notice the transits. Notice what that turns you into for your definition and set tight boundaries of expectations. So I'm really fucking sensitive and I used to be in a service group where we would have these like, you know, go to the bar and hang out and stuff like that. And, um, you know, meet and greets or whatever. And I gave myself 30 minutes, you know, I would go in. And if at the, the 20 minute mark, I knew that I wasn't going to stay any longer than that, you know, I'd you know, drank water or whatever, or ordered one drink. And by the time I was done my drink or my water, um, I could choose then again, because I'm a manifesting generator, I actually have to get into a circumstance before I know whether or not I'm happy there. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, reflectors are quite a bit the same with that. You got to go into the circumstance and then give yourself permission to leave after 20 minutes. And the people who are with you, you just assume that they love you. And that they will give you permission to leave. And you're not asking for permission. You're going to almost be like a manifestor and just freaking inform them and be like, look, if I'm not having fun after 20 minutes, I'm leaving this family barbecue. And I'm going to say whatever I need to say to leave this family barbecue. And you don't have to come with me. I'll get an Uber and just get the hell out of there. It's so funny because my little brother's a manifesting generator and I'm like, that makes so much sense now why he can like come in and he's just like, I'm leaving. Bye. And we're all like, why? Like, <laughs> Yeah. Cause, yeah. You get there, you get the sample, you know, almost like a reflector. You get there, you get the sample. And if it doesn't make you feel like, wow, I really want to stay. I really want to engage. Then get the hell out of there. Which, like I said, makes so much sense because, I mean, uh, he's what, he, like he's surrounded by generators and projectors. There's no there's no one else like him there. Um, and so with it, with the reflectors, then um, what what would be your best suggestion for how to sell um, when it comes to like, oh. like, putting an offer out there? What is the best way for them to sell? <laughs> yes. <laughs> So I love marketing. I love selling. I love niching. Um, I love looking at like, whoa, here's what you're here to be and do. And then we're going to pull that back into something that you actually freaking want to do. And you could do every day, all day, and it's never going to burn you out. And you're always just like so juicy about it. Um, that's my jam. That makes me so freaking excited. So we need to get you to your jam. Mm -hmm. And one of the places um, that I really love to look at is that conscious moon. So really notice the frequency of the conscious moon. And then notice the frequency of the unconscious moon. 
because the unconscious moon is in Gene Keys called your attractor sphere. Mm -hmm. And so that's what people come to you for. They're like, ooh, that's what Jennifer does. And, you know, <laughs> that's what Brittany does. And you're like, you may be completely, because it's unconscious, it's in your body. Uh, you may be completely oblivious. And mine is really sexy. It's like, mm -hmm. ooh. And, you know, from way before it was even close to appropriate, up until today's date, it has been very sexual. Mm -hmm. And so do I have a sexual component of what I do? Do I teach Tantra? You know, like, uh, yes, but it's not my number one thing that I do. Mm -hmm. However, knowing that there is a sexual component to what it is that I do, super important. So maybe you don't have an intellectual component of what it is that you do. However, you have a very intellectual gate sitting there in your unconscious body, or maybe you have a very tribal gate sitting in your unconscious body. And so if you don't answer those intellectual questions and inquiries, then people can't work with you. Or if you, you know, like, uh, tantra like if you're not like oh okay she's willing to be sexy she's willing to talk about turn on uh you know and having a juicy business that just lights you up um then people are like well there's a disconnect between what between what I can perceive you know your end user client will perceive this unconscious moon and want to just like come in and and be with you in in these spaces and if you again haven't answered and you have an intellectual gate and you haven't answered like any actual factual stuff because mm -hmm. maybe not your jam or you know just for example with me like I've had a really you know a long trajectory with owning um uh how I show up and you know you know, people looking at my face, people looking at my body, people having ideas about me sexually, like I've been like stalked on the internet and like a whole bunch of different things. And, you know, now that I have been, you know, I'm, I'm over halfway through my deconditioning process. And, you know, now I'm like, okay, well, regardless of whether you think you're going to get to take my clothes off, maybe not, you know, we're still going to do business together. And so thinking about that, your end user reflectors will be looking at that unconscious moon. Is that something that you can figure out intellectually? Absolutely not. There needs to be an embodiment process with that because it is unconscious. I can have hours and hours of intellectual conversation with you. I'm holding up air quotes, so many air quotes uh, for the for the audio broadcast. And you won't get it until I bring you into your own body. Mm -hmm. So you can experience your unconscious moon and and really start to to embrace that aspect of you that has a beautiful magnetic pull for your ideal client. Okay. So it's really, like you said, like that embodiment becoming the magnet. Um, and with that being said, so with, so say I, it's time for an offer. I want to put an offer out there and I want to go sell it. And I'm like, where the fuck do I put this offer? Is there best bet to go actually look at the transits to be like, I'm a generator today. This is how I should sell it today. And like, actually, like, would it be a good idea for them to map out their launch process? Because I talk about launches to map out their launch process that it's like, well, this day I'm going to sell it this way because I'm a generator that day. This day I'm a projector. I'm going to sell it this way that day. Would that like be beneficial for yeah. a reflector? Absolutely. I would look at the moon phases. I would have, you know, done a ton of journaling. This is me pretending to be a reflector. Okay. The reflector is what I recommend is that you start to have a facility with you, your body and the phases of the moon. And then also uh, what that definition does and changes in the transits, because there's 64 gates that we're going through through the year in all of those different placements. So your, your everyday brand, like your, your conscious sun is going to change because of what it plugs into. Mm -hmm. 
And then what's out in, in space, you know, hurtling through the Milky Way galaxy is also the definition. Like we're coming into Taurus right now. And so that's going to change the definition. Which I'm so, sure is like for reflectors right now, when we're recording this, it's April 21st. So it's like, they're probably experiencing like an energetic shit show because they're coming into Taurus. It's a new moon. There's a solar eclipse. Like <laughs> Someone probably picked them up, shook them and just like put them down and they're like, what the no, fuck no. just happened? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So again, you know, not joking about spending as much time solo as you can. And, you know, I mean, obviously have that conversation with the people who love you so they don't feel separate from you, mm -hmm. but you know, energetic cord cutting, like all of the, you know, maybe old school metaphysical practices that, you know, it's really time to bring them back. Um, super, super clear. And then also what plugs you into other people mm -hmm. um, to just super unplug from other people. So launch, definitely look at the transits. And then the other thing is what like I keep wanting to come back to Chanel and Louis Vuitton. Oh, so for it. <laughs> at your industry, whatever it is, whatever your niche market is, will have name brand recognition people. You know, say you work with realtors, you know, who are the top 1% of the 1% of realtors and you've got an end solution for those realtors, whatever it is, maybe you got a piece of software, something like that. So you are not meant to go and door knock trying to get realtors to buy your software as a service. You will go and get Colwell Banker or Century 21 or uh, Royal LePage or like whoever the, the, the big super brokers are and get a pitch deck and go and, you know, once and done it. Mm -hmm. I just, I would love for you to work like two days a month. <laughs> That's it. All the reflectors are like, That's a thing. <laughs> That's a thing. Like, what if reflectors, like, what would change in your life if you worked two days a month and made $100,000 a month? What would change? Mm -hmm. And you know, I'm not saying, hey, you know, this is a, you know, coach with Jennifer, you know, figure out your thing. Uh, and you're going to make $100,000 a month by working two days. But what I would recommend, and what I always recommend to my clients is how do we monetize the shit out of this? Mm -hmm. And how do we elegant it, you know, de effort it? How do we make this the most elegant process that anybody's ever seen? that you know like you just get to show up and shine mm -hmm. yeah and that's what I think is so important is that a lot of entrepreneurs right now coaches are spending a lot of time behind the scenes and then they're wondering why they aren't getting results and it's because they're not actually sharing their magic with the world they're they feel like they're doing lots and they're doing the things they need to be doing but it's like if you actually go over and look at their profile or you know, you look at what they're creating, they aren't really creating or connecting out there in alignment with who they are, right? Because like we talked about at the very beginning, everybody sells differently. Everyone attracts people differently to them. And when you have someone come in, read your chart, work with you as to how to run your business specifically based on who you are, it's going to change the way that you show up. So, you know, even a realtor, for example, um, if we were to use that example, like you see them at the top of their industry, just because that person at the top of the industry is successful, that doesn't mean now go copy and do and sell and say all the things that they're saying. They're successful that way because they're owning their design. And it's, you look to them as inspiration. You aspire to be like them, but then it's what's my personal roadmap to get to that success? What a great question. Did you guys hear that? What's my personal roadmap? What's mm -hmm. my personal roadmap? And, you know, I see there's so many layers deep 
too. It's like once people start to really investigate, there can be like, oh, well, poor me, poor me, poor me another, I'm a reflector. And then once they notice how, you know, like how many freaking gates without mates are sitting in your chart, like pick one, Mm -hmm. one and be like, okay, well, whatever plugs into my conscious moon, whatever plugs into my unconscious moon, whatever plugs into my Jupiter, like whatever plugs into my vocation, like there's just so many different areas of expertise that you could really dive down deep into and do a deep niche you know Mm -hmm. like two thousand feet deep like the mariana trench niche you know where you have the number one thing you have the rolex solution Mm -hmm. i love that so is there anything that we've missed that you think is super important for the reflectors to know about themselves Mm. Well, I'm just going to reaffirm mm-hmm. that, you know, you are a Rolex, you are a Bugatti. And so, you know, people who are messing around with your psyche, people who are messing around with your finances, people who are advising you need to be present. So you are not buying into, uh, you know, here's my 12 week program that's for everybody. So Maybe, you know, sit on that decision for maybe two 28 day cycles before you jump in and, you know, pay 1997 or whatever the heck this 12 week program is, because there will be, it will be a buffet. There may be two items on the buffet that actually work for you and 2000 items on the buffet that other people could have benefit for that aren't specific to you. And then the second thing is um, treat yourself like a Bugatti. So Bugattis aren't sitting in, you know, a two-bedroom condo parkade, you know, parked beside, uh, you know, like a Ford F-150 truck and a Kia. You know, so that's not where Bugattis park. Mm -hmm. In most cases, they are... You know, sometimes they're in like freaking cold storage, like <laughs> a boat. <laughs> and, you know, so if you're like, mm, environment, mm-hmm. you know, I think that that's probably the biggest question is like, you know, like if you're asking a question of the universe, making a demand of the universe, like universe, show me my environment, show me who's I love in that. my environment, show me. Yeah, and then like the notice like what keeps coming up on your Instagram, what keeps coming up on TikTok. Like, are you being shown um, beaches and and you live in the mountains? You know, are you being shown um, like a cozy velvet couch and you have a leather couch? Like thinking about like the environment is so freaking key. It so- sounds to me like reflectors are the ones who really need to go take a look at their homes right now and go create their own idea of luxury within their home. <laughs> I love it. I love it. And then I'm thinking like, like a feng shui expert who's a reflector. Mm-hmm. Oh my yeah. God. <laughs> We're going to have to find one of those. <laughs> I, know. <It's> on. <laughs> I love it. So, I mean, you mentioned it before, but I want you to say it again, um, just th- to make sure we didn't miss anything. Where can, where can they find you? Yeah. So the best place to come and investigate me, get to know about me is probably inside my community. So if you come to community.jenniferkramerlewis.com, that's Kramer with a C, not a K. Uh, You can go to my YouTube. You can watch a ton of videos of me. See if you enjoy me. Um, I am on all of the podcast platforms. So if you are a podcaster, uh, find me on Audible. Find like what what is your favorite podcast platform? Uh, iHeartRadio, um, Spotify, like I'm on all of them. I have a team that puts me on all of those platforms. So, you know, binge a bunch of my content. Also listen to this show more than once. Like I really feel like 
the transmission that you could get on Monday might be different for you reflectors than the transmission that you get from this show on a Friday. And so maybe put it in your calendar, you know, 28 days from the first listen, do I need to listen to this podcast again? And then ask some questions, you know, do I want to know more about Brittany? Do I want to know more about Jennifer? And, you know, I think both of us have a discovery process where you can come and have a chit chat with us and, you know, ask a couple of questions and, you know, no obligation or whatever. And then we also have products and programs and services that are unique to us. And so, yeah. And I think both of us are really good for making our programs unique, unique to us, but unique for you. You know, I think both yours and my work that we do, we're there. Obviously we have a level of awareness around human design and the importance of creating something for someone that is not like it is for everyone because it's special uniquely to you, not a buffet. (laughs) If that makes sense. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And also there's a buffet, there's a dessert table. (laughs) (laughs) Exactly. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for being on the podcast. Uh, Make sure you guys listen um, and keep your eyes out for Jennifer's other episode that we are going to be dropping soon. And for everyone out there listening, make sure you go out there and you make life your bitch. Thanks for listening to this episode of the make life your bitch podcast. If you enjoyed what you heard today, please share it with your bestie. And if you haven't already, subscribe, rate, and review the show on your favorite podcast player. If you have any questions, feedback, or compliments that you want to throw like confetti, you can reach me directly at podcast at makelifeyourbitch.co. Thanks for listening.